There will be two review classes, and first one, they, yeah, we also give a quiz today. All right, uh, this is the second test, okay? Majority of our problems will be on uh, uh, series. Convergence of series, divergence of series. <clears throat> there are a couple of problems about polar coordinates, polar equations. Uh, so let's begin with the uh, with the first problem. Now I'm going to use a sample test of version one of our problems, okay? And you should find time to do. Sample test version number two when you have a time. <clears throat> well, uh, so the first problem is about set up the integral for the lens uh, given by parametric equations. Set up. Integral for for the length of the function of the of the curve. Now the curve is given by equations such like this: y equals four sine t and t is between zero and two pi. Now what we have to know is, uh, if we have curve in the space, could be in any dimension space. If usually it's in two dimension frame, so you have two components, okay, x and y. But this can be also curve in three dimension space. <laughs> okay, so the s denotes the arc lens, right? If it's in two dimensional plane, okay, here's a point has X and Y, and X, Y are related, okay? X, Y can be given uh, uh, by functions of T. X and Y could be just related by some equations. All right, what we know is the small change in the arc length, okay, is going to be the small change in the X variable and Y small change Y variable squared. So Pythagorean theory, essentially, right? So it's Pythagorean theory, okay? So if I have to draw the triangle, uh, it goes like that. This is a DX, that's DY, that's DS, okay? It's hard to read it. So Pythagorean theory is used, uh, Pythagorean theorem is used here, okay? So DS, is going to be square root dx square plus dy square. And uh, the magic of a calculus is the integral of, of the lens is going to be the, as a, as the lens is going to be integral of the ds. If the arc lens is L, then that's a formula. That's just right. But you can change it to any variable. Okay. So if dx, if x and y both are function t, then this will be dx over dt square plus dy over dt square and dt, and t star from a to b, right? So this is a formula. Okay, we need to review the form. Uh, if you move dt into radical, cancel dt, you get dx square plus dy square, which is ds. All right, so this is the idea. Now, for our problem, okay, uh, the interval for t is from zero to two pi, and x is a sine, cosine to the, so the derivative of x with respect to t is negative sine t, negative cosine t, right, square. And here, four 
cosine t squared dt. So, so that's it. This is the integral for the for the lens. You may not able to evaluate this integral, so you can use a computer, okay, to 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 evaluate to approximate the number, okay. Uh, the second problem is to sketch the graph of the of uh, of the power equation. The power equation could be in any form, like yeah, this one is i equals three plus two cosine theta. But I really wanted to. Uh, able to draw as any form like a plus b cosine theta or a plus b sine theta. The essential is there's no difference, only uh, maybe you rotate about the axis 90 degree. Uh, the reason is, uh, uh, the reason is sine, uh, sine pi over, Two minus theta is going to be cosine theta, so there's no essential difference, right? And uh, cosine pi over two minus theta is going to be sine theta. So, so the difference between the two, these two graphs is uh, the difference is which one. You now the graph does three different type of graphs for each type of function, okay? And uh, and uh, cosine theta okay, takes the maximum value, minimum value when it's uh, when theta equals pi, okay, when theta equals zero and uh, and the pi, okay, when cosine cosine zero is one, so this is a plus b and a minus b. So we we don't know which number is positive, which number is negative, but the graph usually looks like a typical graph looks like that. Okay, a typical graph looks like that. You know, okay, it's, it's going went to left to the right or right to the left. But for the sine theta, a typical graph would be like the up and down. Okay, uh, because sine theta. The maximum value is one, uh, uh, and uh, and the minimum value is negative one. So uh, it depends on sine a and b. Okay, so in this case, you know, in this case, b is a positive number. You know, so I draw the picture like that. Okay, so you you should get some idea. Sometimes the graph could be, sometimes the graph could be like that, and sometimes the graph could be uh, like this. Oh, sorry. So there are three different type of graphs. So before you sketch the graph, you should know how how does it look like, okay? And the similarly, for the sign, it's going down. Yeah, it's good. It goes like that. And the other one is. Oh, I. <laughs> yeah. It goes. Yeah, this is that. Okay, so let's look at, okay, let's look at i equals 3, 2, uh, cosine theta. And, uh, what I have to do is figure it out, first of all, okay, this never be negative, okay? Because the smallest value for cosine theta is gonna be negative one. So this is always, first of all, i is always positive, actually is greater than equal to one. The smallest value for i, okay? So that indicates uh, the graph will be in the second type, will be the second type of graph uh, in about, so, and the second is i equals five when theta is zero, i equals one when theta equals pi. 
So I think I can easily draw the graph in this case. And here is a five. This is a one. And this should be like that. Okay. And its I is always positive when you rotate it, right? When I increase the theta, I is always positive. So you always, in the positive direction, you, you plot the point. But it's increasing, decreasing. And when you see that increases, you don't need to give a list of the values. Maybe maybe half pi where it is, right? When 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 theta, this is a three, negative three. When when theta uh, when theta equals pi over two, and uh, cosine theta is going to be zero. Okay. So so maybe you can put three here where theta equals pi over two or three pi over two, you know, because cosine is zero. Right? That's enough. It's, you can, as long as you end the, the picture, you probably don't need to plot too many points. You can sketch the graph. Okay, and you know the direction when theta increases. So if I, if I change the cosine theta to sine theta, then you just rotate the graph, right? Just rotate the graph. All right, my question is, do you still remember how to find the area of that region? Okay, what is the area of that? Includes by this curve. The area of that region is going to be right. You first of all you write down the formula. It's going to be r square d theta. Okay. Right. Then, uh, then you plug it. The formula. Now sometimes it's not from zero to pi. If, uh, uh, because sometimes when you when see that increases, you over, you know, overrides the original join, okay, and the and the, and, the, and the overlap, you know, then you be careful. You choose the domain for the theta, okay. So this three plus two cosine theta squared d theta. You just all have to do is evaluate this integral, okay. And uh, that's right. So let's let's finish it. It's not a difficult. So here's nine plus uh, 12 cosine theta plus four cosine square theta and d theta. But four cosine square theta is going to be, cosine square theta is going to be half of, so this part actually is two cosine two theta plus one, okay? Cosine square theta is going to be half of cosine two theta plus one. Then half and the four cancel out to get two. But remember, the integral of a cosine k theta, if you say that from zero to two pi is always zero. Okay, so you don't need to waste time. Cosine two theta d theta is always zero as long as uh, k is integer. Any integer. Okay, so this is always zero. So that's why when you look at this, you find out. You just needed to uh, evaluate, uh, that's 11, right? Nine plus two, 11, so 11. You all have to do is just evaluate this integral. Forget the cosine theta, cosine two theta, okay? So that's going to be 11 pi, okay? So this integral is always zero, this integral is zero. So don't need a don't need a waste time to find the anti derivative. <coughs> okay. I I look at the when um the quiz problem. So let's 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 start the convergence. Okay. I I see there are a number of students that still have a trouble to to do the problem correctly. Sometimes just algebra mistakes. 
when you try to simplify, if we use a ratio test, trying to simplify a to a n plus one divided by n, right? And I'm surprised many students that cannot simplify and they end up with a very wrong expression. That's, I feel very sorry. Even you learn the calculus idea in college, but you have mass background, you build up earlier in high school, middle school, it causes you trouble, right? So be careful when you simplify the expression if you're trying to use a, uh, trying to use a, a, a ratio test, for example. It's pretty complicated, a n plus one divided by a, okay? And uh, so, uh, just, yeah, just be careful, okay? So we are going to look at this problem, okay, to see how many, uh, how many ideas you can have to solve this problem, okay? Suppose you have one plus four over three to the this is on the sample test. Actually, the sample test is just a, a previous test. I put converted to sample test, just call it sample test. I post that. So when you look at this, okay, uh, how do you prove, quickly prove it is convergent? Well, there are some students always use ratio tests, no matter what you want. Just use a ratio test <laughs> because you see there's you know something to the n's power, right? So quicker link to the ratio test or the row test. Uh, actually, that not the best way to do the problem. Maybe it's very hard to use a ratio test if you don't if you don't have a good math background skill skill to simplify to estimate, right? So when you look at this, you find out, first of all, all the terms are positive. So that gives the opportunity to use a comparison test. But comparison test must be, all the terms must be positive, right? Compare, right? N is positive. So A N, uh, so which term really dominates the whole, you know, the whole fraction? I think make a simple observation, four over three is greater than one. So it approaches, it approaches infinity quickly. So really one plus that number, the one is can be ignored, okay? So if you ignore that one, then you get a geometry series and that's a convergent. So you just need to compare with the geometry series. And in this case, you don't need to use a limited test, you just say less than equal to four over three to the power n. This is the best way to do. Okay, this is a your BN, right? So n is greater than zero, less than equal to BN, but BN is already finite because it's a, you can even calculate the value, okay? This is a finite, I don't need to waste time. It's a geometry series. You have to say that why is it finite if you don't prove it? You can recall some test, right? Geometry series test that i is smaller than one. If you if you say something like that, it's clear to everybody. This is a you know why it's convergent, okay? Because it's geometry series and i is real over four. It's less than one. So this implies this is a convergent. Why it's convergent? By, by the comparison test, okay? Uh, can you use as a test? Maybe, but, uh, but it's really uh, more complicated because if you use a ratio test, I don't think you can able to simplify it, okay? Now, if I change the problem a little bit, Okay, three over four instead of four over three. Okay, what is the best way to prove? First of all, it's, it's convergent, I already make a conjecture. Second, you have to prove it. Can you quickly figure out? Yeah. 
Hmm? The question is it convergent or divergent? This is this is convergent. Why? Any quick idea? He says no. <laughs> huh? It's divergent. So only two answers of that conclusion. But that's not answer, that's not solution. Yes, solution is including the proof. Okay. Answer is just divergent. Okay. This is uh, divergent. Okay. This is a divergence. The reason is first of all, three over four, this is gonna be zero. Okay, clear, no problem. So this is a AN. You don't need that, you cannot use a compression test to prove it's divergent. Okay, in this case, what you do is this n, this is almost equal to zero because it's converging to one as n approaches infinity. All right, it's not going to be, in other words, it's not going to be zero. That's enough. This implies this series is divergent by. We say the nth term test for divergence. All right, you have to say something like that. Uh, because if it's convergent, the limit of an nth term must be zero. Now the limit of an nth term is clearly it's not going to be zero. It's going to be one. So it's divergent, right? So yes. Now, if you use the wrong argument, including computation mistakes, and then jump to the conclusion it's divergent, and the proof does not support, uh, jump to the conclusion it's divergent, but your proof does not support your claim, you cannot get much credit. Okay? Sometimes we get 20% of credits guilty because you, at the end you conclude it's divergent. But the argument, even there are some mistakes, you know, and it does, and and uh, and nothing to do with the yeah, conclusion. All right. So the sec the next problem is negative to n, and this is clearly is alternate series. Now, now, what is the simplest way to solve this problem? The simplest way to prove this uh, you shouldn't use alternative series. Why? I tell you, you're not able to prove it's decreasing quickly. If you use the alternative series test, you have to use you have to prove yeah, Bn equals two n, right? How to prove it's decreasing? Yeah, question how to prove, if you cannot prove it, you cannot get a full credit. How do you prove that Bn is decreasing to zero, right? Because that's necessary. You have to verify that, then you can convert this. This is a conversion, right? You cannot use, uh, Look at this rule, you can look at those nothing. You cannot use the derivatives because n factorial. You change n to x variable, now there's no x factorial okay, at all. So, this is the theorem. Looks like an alternative series, but you cannot use the alternative series test. Okay. Uh, the best way to do is to use the ratio test. Okay, so the whole term is a n. Okay, uh, so a n plus one. Now be careful. I'm saying that because you, you know you know how to use it. You know you know why you have to use the ratio test. But if you cannot simplify, then you're in trouble. Okay, you're not able to jump the conclusion. Okay, so negative one is gone. So only n plus one factorial, two to the n plus one. 
is n factor to them. Just do step by step, okay? So turn this upside down, and then you get n factor n plus one factor, right? Next step, then you simplify, and the clear is two, and this n plus one, and then the limit is going to be zero as n approaches infinity. Okay, so that means L, the limit as n approaches infinity is going to be zero, which is less than one. You have to say that less than one. If you don't say that, you know, you, you did not give me complete proof. Okay, then by the ratio test, this series is convergent. Of course, the original series convergent. So the origin series is absolutely convergent, not just only convergent, it is absolutely convergent. So correct statement is says that this series is, you can put a parenthesis there because I didn't ask you to say that, absolutely convergent, but you prove Prove the strong convergence. Okay. Probably this is uh, the only way you can do. Okay. Of course, you can use a known result like exponential of function e to the x because e to the x is going to be right. And this is a true for any x, right? You can use this factor to prove it's because you already know it's convergent. So what happens when e to the negative two, and then negative two to the power n, right? And then this is what you see. Okay. And then, uh, but you start from one, so it's going to be when n equals uh, zero, it's one. One plus, yeah. So what I'm going to do here, you can also use this argument to prove it's convergent. Okay, so this is a convergent. Not only that, convergent to. Convergent to e to the negative two minus one because you move one to the left hand side. All right. So this you can this is also proof because you know the you you use this result. The right hand side series is convergent to e to the x, but the n start from zero. Can be count. Your series then start from one. You just repress x by negative two. That's it. So this is also in proof. Yeah, that's a second idea, but it's not very common. All right. All right. This series converging, or diverging. So clearly, this is a non-negative terms because if this is a n, this is always positive. Okay. Uh, so all I have to do is just modify a n a little bit. When you multiply, uh, when add them together, this is just equal to one over n times n plus one, and clearly. Denominate is uh, dominated by n square, right? So this is just equal to less than equal to one over n times n plus zero, which is one over n square, which is bn. That's p series. P is greater than two. Oh, p is equal to. So use a comparison test is the best way to do. Uh, in this case, you can use a limited comparison test. It's not big, big a difference. The limit of comparison test when it's used is you cannot use this simple in code. For example, if I change n plus one to n minus one, then you cannot just say less than equal to. Okay, so so this is a 
comparison, then you know that this is a convergent okay, by the P series test. P is going to be two, okay, greater than one. So this implies is a convergent. Okay. By the comparison test. The so limit the comparison test uh, is used when you cannot simple make a simple inequality. Okay. For example, if I ask you to look at this one, okay, this is still convergent, but I have to prove that using the limit comparison test instead of comparison test, because you cannot say this is less than equal to n one of n square. Okay, so this is n, n is greater than zero, no problem. But this is almost equal to one of n squared, right? When you drop a negative one. But you cannot, n is not less than equal to n. So you cannot use a comparison test to prove this. But still, there's no bigger difference between n and n. n is less than n. And in fact, <laughs> Bn is less than n, okay? Bn is less than n, but it's useless, this in quality. Okay. So we cannot use the comparison test here. We cannot use the comparison test. We have to use the limit. So limit the comparison test, okay? So I'm not going to work on that problem, you know how to do it, just let me just take a limit, okay? Can you use uh, any other tests? Possible, but this is always the simplest one, okay? So the next problem, is problem, yeah. It says that use the integral test to determine whether series conversion, integral test, okay? So if without using integral test, I don't think you are able to, to, to show this, okay? Without using integral test, you are not able to prove or disprove why this series is slightly uh, but it converges to zero n's term look at that right n's term okay this is a uh, If n is to the sum power greater than one, it's convergent. But that power, you cannot prove that because the nature log of n goes really pretty slow. Okay? Right. So the best way to solve this problem is to use an uh, integral test. Okay? So f of x. Is going to be x square root natural log of x. And I think clearly this is decreasing on the interval from 2 to infinity. Okay, it's decreasing and it's positive. Yeah, positive and decreasing. I think it's obvious because the numerator is constant, the denominator is increasing. So it's, this is obvious. You don't need to prove that. All right. So, all I have to do is just integral of this function, okay? Let's take a look at the entire derivative of this function. 
antiderivative of this function, okay, you use substitution, let's u to be natural log of x. So du equals one of x dx. So we we'll get integral of a square u du. And I'm pretty sure the entire derivative is this, okay, plus constant. So this is the entire derivative. All right. All right, so, so the integral of f of x dx is going to square root of natural log of b minus two square root of natural log of two. And the clearly it's converging to infinity as b goes to infinity, okay? So the integral is divergent. In other words, it's gonna be divergent. So that implies is divergent okay, by the integral test. Uh, okay, but from the proof, you will see that uh, you can see it really depends on the power of nature along the hand. Here, the power is in one half. If I change to the p, if p is greater than one, it's divergent. If p is less than one, it's convergent. I'm pretty sure. So if if we are able to determine this convergence, okay, it depends on the value of p, then you can do all type of problems here, okay? So this is a clearly it's going to be a convergent if p is greater than one. Divergent if p is less than one, okay? More general. And use the integral test. Okay, so you spend some time to look at this problem, okay? So the next one. We want to see whether this is convergent or conditionally convergent, absolute convergent or divergent. Now, what is a strategy to, to check? To me, I think it's a condition for me, it's obvious. <laughs> Why? First of all, yeah, how do you think about this, right? So this term, right, bn is n, n squared minus one is almost equal to n, n squared, which is almost one, okay, right? Okay, so that's why, uh, that is why, uh, and mm. this one, is conditionally convergent. We already know that. Why it's conditional? It's convergent by by all the But it's divergent when you remove the negative sign to become a harmonic series. Okay. So so the above series should be conditionally convergent. But is this not an argument? Okay. There's no theorem. <laughs> I guarantee that you can't. You have to use the right there. Okay. okay. So I guess I can only say that is conditionally convergent. Okay, how to prove some serious conditions? You have to prove that it's not absolute convergent. 
it, it, you have to prove that it's convergent. Right, two things. All right, so first thing you have to prove that is this is divergent. Okay, why? Why it's divergent? Use the limited compression test, okay? Yeah, so this is a, uh, uh, why it's divergent? Because this series is almost equal to one of n, right? So that's divergent, but you just use the limited compression test. If this series is, that's called n, this is called the bn, right? Then limit, of n of a bn is going to be what? Obvious. I'm not going to waste time to show you how to prove it. So n is the original series. bn is simplified. What? The compel the ratio is going to be what? Okay. So, but this is divergent. Why it's divergent? It's harmonic series. Okay. Harmonic series. Or P series was P equals what? All right? Harmonic, yes. So then you implies is divergent. Okay, by the limited compression test. All right. So you prove it's not adversary convergent. In other words, the original series is not adversary convergent. Not a, so then you still have to prove it's convergent, right? You have to prove this is convergent. Okay, and you have to show, tell me why. Well, it's convergent just because this is a alternating series, okay? This is an N, I still use N, it doesn't matter with N. So N, you have to prove that, that when same, it's positive and it's decreasing to zero, right? Positive is obvious when N is greater than two, or equal to two, and it's decreasing is not obvious, converging to zero is obvious, Okay, because the denominator is larger. And the uh, Harvey proof is decreasing. You have to prove this function, the derivative is negative. Okay, right? For some larger x. Minus x times the derivative denominator is 2x. So I get. Huh, I get negative one minus x squared. It's always negative, clear, period. Great. Okay, so that implies fx is decreasing. That implies uh, n, which is f of n, decreasing. Then, so therefore, therefore the series converges. So it is convergent by the alternating series test, okay? So that's why the condition. All right, so the next one, power series. Okay. We want to find the radius of convergence. Maybe we want to find in interval of convergence. For what x it is convergent. To do that, you see you have an n's power, right? X to the n's power. So you can use a ratio test, you can use a row test, it really doesn't matter for this problem. But if n squared becomes n factorial, you have to use ratio test. 
if it's n square, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is an n, right? So let's look at use a, a root test. So that is going to be okay, square root of n root 1 over n square x over 3, right? So the numerator is just over 3 of x. The denominator is this. The limit is just x as n approaches infinity. You have to use the fact this n root of n approaches 1. Right? If you use the uh, ratio uh, load test, you, very often you have to deal with the n root of n approaches 1. All right, clearly, when x less than 1, okay, right, this series is absolutely convergent. Okay, and when x is greater than 1, uh, you know, this is by, by the load test, okay? And this is, this series is going to be uh, divergent. This is also by the ratio, load test. Okay, so you, you know the radius convergence, clearly, you know. If you just want to find the radius convergence, you only that. Okay, I is going to be the radius convergence. Uh, uh, one is going to be right. So I equals one is a is a sorry is the radius of convergence. But if you want to find the interval convergence, you have to look at the two end point. Okay, I think the two end point, the series is of a certain convergence to end point. The reason is. When absolute value of x equals one, this series, this series, right, is going to be one of n square because absolute x is going to be one. So this is a convergent, right? So that means the series is also absolute convergent even at the end of points. At x equals plus minus one. Okay. That, so you get the interval convergence. The interval convergence from negative one to positive one. The next two problems, maybe you have to find the find the Terra series. Okay. Find the Terra series for f of x equals nature log of 4 minus 3x at a equals 1. So, what is the best way to find the Terra series? <coughs> By definition, the first method, but you have to find the nth order derivative. It's complicated. It's not easy to find a general formula. You cannot just give me the first two terms. Okay, step one. By definition, this should be equal to okay. My question is, are you able to find a general formula? If you're not, give up. 
You cannot use it, right? A second way is we know power series representation must be terror series using the fact using the fact that the power series representation if you are able to find out representation is the terror series okay of course at a code way but how can they find power series we have to use a known result we're using the fact we have here nature log of one minus u is going to be i think it's u to the power n right n divided by n i'm pretty sure and there's a negative sign also it's fun. all right yeah and this holds when u is less than one. Okay. So that's it. So I have to change it to this form. But now you have a four minus three x, right? So I let w to be uh, x minus one. Then x is going to be w plus one. Okay. So f of x four minus three x is going to be natural log four minus three w plus one right. so w plus one four minus three so x three is going to be natural log of one minus three w okay four minus three is going to be one but this natural log of, you see when x close to one w close to zero okay so you can use above formula it's going to be negative. It's n here, 3w to the power n. And the 3w should be less than 1. That's it. You know, using the above fact here. Okay. So we got the answer. n, 3 to the power n, wn, w, x minus 1. And uh, w is x minus 1. It's less than 1 third. All right, so we get not only the characteristics, we also get the convergence. Okay. Right. We know the function can be expressed as this terra series when x plus x minus one is less than one third. Okay. Right. So so we get more than we need. Okay, it is terra series. at a equals one <sighs> similarly we can find the power series representation for the function okay find the power series representation for the for the function like a five minus four x at a equals one. It's the same idea. Okay. To do that, you have to use uh you have to modify, right? So you let w to be x minus one then f of x equals 5 minus 4 what is x w plus 1 right. so when x close to a w close to 0 that's all we need a pursuit of w will be less than 1 so after simplifying it's going to be 1 minus 4 w okay so when uh x minus one less than some number and the w will be less than that number so 4w will still be less than 
four times that number. But anyway, so this is going to be, uh, it's going to be from zero, four W to the nth power, as long as W is, four W is less than one. Okay, so we get four to the power n, W is X minus one to the nth power. And here, x minus one less than one quart. So, this is a clearly it's possible simplification. I don't want, I don't even say more about that because we call it f of x is equal to that, right? And then x minus one less than one quart. And then we have this one here. Okay. Uh, 